Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the uh, this uh, little landscape demonstration we're going to do here. Um, now, where this is going to differ from my YouTube videos, obviously we're going to be doing this in more detail. Uh, we'll talk about colour mixing and we'll be looking at in more depth on how I actually paint a painting. Um, so, what we're going to do today, this image is going to be available to you to uh, download. Um, from the website, um, so you can copy, you can print off this image and work with it. Unfortunately, my printer's not done a very good job of printing it off, but obviously I've got the original on the uh, computer. It's I've chosen this because it's got all the components in to make to help us paint a simple landscape with a building in it. Now, there's not much light in this painting, and this is where the job of an artist comes along. Sometimes you'll be given a picture, sometimes you'll see a scene, and there'll be no light or impact within that within that scene. So what you have to do is use your imagination and create it. Because if, <coughs> excuse me, as if not, you'll end up with a pretty flat image, a flat painting. So why I like this little one was because we've got a little road leading us in. So that's taking your eye in. We've got the cottage here. And we've got a little bit of perspective going on at the cottage. Um, we've got a couple of little trees here, so that's taking my, my eye nicely into the painting. Um, we've got some hills up here, which when I do my demonstration, I'm going to leave quite simple. I can't see a lot of detail there. If I, if I squint my eyes, it's very just blocked in shapes. So this one is really for the beginner watercolour, somebody who's not got a lot of experience in painting, but wants to create a landscape with some um, interesting components. We've got a fence coming along here, um, and we're gonna just sort of simplify. It's a simple scene anyway, so we don't have to simplify it much, but we're just gonna draw it out, or you're gonna draw it out, and then you're gonna see how I paint it. Like in the foreground here, I can see there were some flowers or plants growing. Now, there's no color there as such. Now, I might add some color to that. And um, they look like sort of foxgloves or something like that growing there. So to add some interest to the painting, I will put some color in there that I can't see in this picture. And that's gonna add more impact to it. Um, the sky, we might add a cloud to the sky. It looks a very gray sky on here. So I'm gonna put a blue sky in with a, a, just a cloud to demonstrate a cloud above. Um, so, just going to clean my palette up and then we'll get stuck in and uh, okay. have a go. Right, now obviously before I paint I make sure I've got plenty of fresh water to wash my brushes out. Um, I've started by just look at, I'm going to do the sky first. Um, I've mixed up some colours that I think I'll need for the sky so I haven't got to start thinking about that once I've started. I've got those colours already mixed. Um, I've got a little uh, pool of cobalt blue and cerulean blue just there. Um, then I've put a mixture of what have I got there? Magenta and cobalt blue so I get like a purpley colour. And then I've got a little pool of Naples yellow and magenta just to make the sky nice and warm and then I've got some just magenta on its own. So I've got, you know, you, it doesn't matter if you've got, I've got those exact colours, you could use some cadmium red or something like that. Just, um, but on a, what I'm going to do is, obviously, you'll have seen um, on the course information, on the selection of colours I recommend. Now, if you can get close to those colours, it would be useful. But if you can't, you can still paint perfectly without them. So, I'm going to go by my Mr Bottle, and I'm just going to give the sky a little spray. Not too much. And I'm going to use the side of my brush today. And I'm just going to start painting off the paper. Maybe I need to miss that a little bit more. And I just want to create some a nice soft cloud in this part of the sky here. Now I'm going to change it a bit. I'm going to take a little bit of the warm wash and I'm going to paint it in the down towards the horizon. So I've got the blue at the top, the Naples yellow and the magenta in what is essentially the white part of a cloud. But I don't think, from what I read and what I understand, that any part of a cloud is white. Just dropping a little bit more magenta and cobalt blue in there and working my way up the page and then up here I'm just going to have lots of nice cerulean coming down. I don't want the sky to look too busy because it's too small a sky 
you know you don't want your your sky to be um, conflicting with other parts of the painting so we're doing a really well we've done a really simple sky now there are other ways you can make clouds and skies some people sponge them out with tissues I don't particularly favor that way but some people do but just for a, a quick a little bit more magenta at the bottom with a little bit more just to add and we'll go over those trees we might just bring this down over the top of the hill because it's like a magenta -y, bluey color and that would be nice for that those distant hills there and we'll just yeah and we'll just bring the blue down over the top of that hill you know you think as you work your way around the painting you kind of think okay I'll carry on here that's why a lot of it is just instinct and stuff you'll pick up in time with experience so it's going to deepen that blue a little bit there so I just quite like the idea of it being a bit heavy on that corner okay now as I move down the page on a paint around the corner but I'll warm it up now because as you come closer the colors get warmer so I'm taking a little bit of lemon yellow a little bit of raw sienna and I'm just going to mix those together and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of magenta so I've got a nice pinky warm colour and I'm just going to start sort of trying to make trying to warm this land mass up a bit maybe a little bit too warm there so I can add a little bit of blue and that kind of turns it into a greeny colour you know I'm not slavishly following the colours on the paper on, you know because quite honestly they look a bit boring and I want to create a much more sunny feel in my painting okay bring the colors down over the page when I go over the front of the building I don't care that side it's going to be in shadow this side I'm just going to go over the roof. That's okay. So basically, I'm just working my way down the page, greening the colours up as they come and warming them up. All right, now we'll introduce a bit more green. Nice sort of. Uh, I'm going to use my, the side of my brush again because the detail's getting closer to me. You know, this, I'm getting, I'm moving more towards the front of the page, so the detail has to become more descriptive. So I'm trying to sort of leave some white bits behind. So I'm using more dry brush. I'm not so, I'm not covering it quite the way I was at the background with a wash. Here I'm just using the side of the brush. Mix a little bit more lemon yellow. A little bit more cobalt. Now I want to introduce some colours into this because it will be too. It could end up too green, and that doesn't look right either. If I look in there, there's lots of uh, more burnt colours, uh, raw sienna, earthy type tones. Not all bright, vivid greens, and often that's a problem with paintings you see by novice artists. They often look a little bit can be too green so I'm afraid that that's there's a bit too green so what I'm going to do a bit of blue blue it down a bit I'm just going to darken it slightly this is still wet this paper here it's drying quite quickly today it's quite warm in my studio so it's drying quite quickly but uh, and they're the sorts of problems you'll have as an artist when you're outside things do grow and you'll just then you'll just have to adapt your painting accordingly you know if things dry too quickly then you have to be able to say well, okay I'll do this now I'll change it this way to, to to benefit from what's happened this side I'm just going to carry on a bit more magenta in it and I'm just going to leave that road for a second now the road is a tarmac road but I want to make it a bit more interesting and uh, so I'm going to paint some I don't know I have a muddy track I think so I'm going to have a bit of burnt umber, 
and a bit of uh, raw umber, sorry, and a little bit of cobalt blue. I'll make a nice warm grey, grey brown. And I'm just going to, that disappears around the. And I'm just going to leave some dry brush in there just to give that appearance of broken texture in the foreground. And that actually helps take your eye into the picture a little bit. And then I'll mix again a slightly darker mix of cobalt blue. Slightly darker mix of cobalt blue and raw umber. And again, just 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 make it a bit more interesting, because that's what we are. We we can afford to do this as artists because we're not we don't want to slavishly copy the photograph. We want to put something into it and make it ours and own it a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's fine if you're doing something for you know a painting for somebody and they say, well, no, I want it identical to the photo. Then you have to do the best you can and make it identical to the photograph. But it's not the way I like to work. Okay, now that's dried, we're going to look at the uh, the hills and the distance here, and we're going to keep those really simple because this is a beginner's watercolor. I'm not going to do lots of changes of color. We're just going to block it in with bluey tinges at the top, and then slightly warming it as we come down to the bottom towards the house there, uh, and cool colors in the distance, and then build up a little bit of detail afterwards. So basically, we just want to get the impression of those mountains sitting backwards, those hills sitting back in the painting. So for that, I've just mixed up a little bit of cobalt blue and uh, cadmium red. I sort of get a grey blue colour. Now I want it more on the bluey side than grey, I think. And then what I'll, but what I'll do is, as I work my way down, I'll add a little bit of lemon yellow with uh, to it and uh, raw sienna just to warm it up as we come back down the hill towards the cottage. So I'll just charge my brush with paint. I'm just using the side of my brush and I'm just drawing in the side of the mountain there. Using water as well. Just don't want it too dark. Maybe I've gone a little bit too dark. But it'll be fine. You've got to remember that watercolors actually dry an awful lot lighter than they appear on the page. So that's quite handy sometimes. It also works against you. Right here I'm just adding a little bit of green to the mix now, a little bit of blue. Sorry, I'm adding a little bit of um, lemon yellow which when it's hitting the green it's turning more of a blue colour. And I'm just changing it slightly. So I'm not keeping it all blue. I'm, I'm using, I'm just I've got the opportunity because I've got the palette colours there to make it slightly more interesting. I don't want to be constantly just putting one colour down because it will look boring. So in, in places I'm adding more yellow to around the, the hills. Now I'm just going to go over these trees here because they're going to be a lot darker so I don't need to worry about those. I can just go over the trees. Far distant hill needs to be blue and these trees in the background can be blue because they're going to be a lot darker later and I can go over them. Now as we come down to this section, I want to think about adding more green, warming it up slightly, so I'm coming down towards the road and it is more and it's warmer there. Try and leave a little bit of broken brush stroke there, add a little bit of texture. Make sure you've got plenty of paint on your brush, you don't want to be I'll add a little bit more blue in there just because it's a little bit shadowed. Oh, my, it's on my prints out. I'll have to get myself a new printer because it looks oh, it's not printing very well at the moment. And so I'm keeping this. With, so basically, we're, we're into sort of two colours there cobalt, well, three colours cobalt blue, a little bit of cadmium red, and uh, A little bit of lemon yellow. Let's just go back over that. It's dry. It's ever so warm in here today, and it's drying really quickly. And there we go. Okay. Now we've done that little bit there. We're going to look into painting the roof of the house, and that's a kind of like an orangey colour. It is on my picture anyway. Um, 
So I'm just going to use one of these pools here, add a little bit of light red, add a little bit of raw sienna, and see what I end up with. And I've just got a little test patch here of paper that uh, I use for doing tests on. And I kind of like that because what I'm also going to do is drop a little bit of blue into it as I do it to cool it down in places. Um, now I don't know if it's red because of my printer or it is actually red. I think it has got a rusty look to it. Rusty green look. Anyway, I'll go with it and uh, we'll see what we end up with. Okay. So I'm just using a, a round, smallish brush and then I'm just going to paint in the roof. And just there I'm going to get a little bit of blue. I'm not going to, I don't want it all too bright red, that would look awful. A little bit more red. And then we're just basically blocking in the roof. The rooftop. on the side of those dormers because when we put the shadows in in a little while all this will come to life he says he hopes okay there's the roof on the cottage I might just what I'll do when these little bits come down I'm just going to add a little bit of cobalt blue because they're quite grey on the picture and just grey them in And the fronts a little bit of grey colour. So just by adding a little bit of cobalt blue to that mixture you get a, a nice warm grey colour. And this front side of the house is going to be in shadow so we might as well do that as the roof is wet. So just a little bit of cobalt blue, a little bit of that orangey mixture because it's like a with weather tin building. And I'm just going to put in the front of the building now I know that's in shadow, so that's fine. And as we come down to where the grasses are, try, try and break the brush stroke a little bit, just so you get a nice sort of broken edge. That's that. Something like that. And what we could do, while we're at it, is there'll be a bit of a shadow in the front of the building, so we could save ourselves some time later Let's put that in bit of blue bit of yellow because it's on grass the shadow would have a yellowy tinge to it and just use the edging of, edge of the brush to create the shadow and all of a sudden this will start now we put some darks in it will start to create some lights in the painting and make it more interesting because often that's the problem with uh, amateur paintings that there's not enough variation in lights and darks now quickly I want to get some cobalt blue raw umber quite a dark mix I want to do this before the wash dries on the front of the building so I want to put the door in and it's quite a thick a thick mix it's something you'll have to experiment with apologize that's Toby barking and I just want to put the doorway in here and I want that to bleed slightly Put in the sides of the eaves there and under there. That's dried, you see. It's a shame. I'll have to have a look at that in a minute. And there's some details here. And under the under the building there's some shadow. I want to warm that up slightly. But we can come back and put some extra washes on top of this. It'll be fine. There's not a lot of information on top of that on, on the front of that building to actually paint. It's quite sparse um, with detail. Okay, right, that's dried now. Now we've got the this side of the building uh, here, which has uh, got some light on it. But what I want to do here is I'm going to on my when I did my material setup, what I used to paint with, I had this brush and I showed you it. 
And I'm going to have a go at using it on the side of the building here uh, to describe the corrugated tin that's on that, this one to get the lines without having to paint every line. So I'm just going to get some cobalt blue. So I want it a kind of a warm and some burnt sienna because I want a warm grey type colour for it. And I'm just going to use the brush very lightly. Hope you can see this because it's exposed. To take a little bit of paint off because it's just to sort of help get this good brush. It's doing this well. I want to to get the texture. Then I want to get where it's really rusty. I want to get burnt sienna almost on its own. I think it's okay that. And it's quite rusty up here. And I think that works quite well. Just to build that texture up in the side of the building. I like that. So well done. What's his name? Terry Harrison. A really good brush. I like it. I recommend you get one of those because um, I, like I said I've not really used it. I, I, I did some messing about with it when I first had it but this is the first time I, I've actually used it in a painting and in all fairness it's uh, it's good. I like it. I recommend it. Not that it makes any difference if I recommend it but I'm just saying it's good to see people use these things before you go out and buy them but it, that would have lots of uses. Um, so also for when you're doing foliage on trees it would be useful for the broken tops of trees and stuff. So if you can get one of those, um, it's made by ProArt, um, it's a really nice brush, I'd get one. Okay now that's dried I'm just going to go back and uh, with, with this bristly brush again and just lightly go over it in places just to describe the lines in the tin. I don't want to do this too much, you don't want to overdo it because overdoing it will be won't be good. So just a, just like that, just kind of describes the weathered look on the on the uh, on the tin. It's where I do too much. Okay, then there's a little uh, lip of shadow on there. So I'm just going to get some cobalt blue, burnt sienna, and I'm just going to just go along this edge, just to describe where the tin has has been overlapped slightly. We'll just let that dry. Maybe we could just soften it with my finger a bit. But that's not too bad. And then just draw maybe a couple of lines down in places. But this is the sort of thing that you can play with and just practice on a spare bit of paper. Now because I've done that I need to make this darker. I can see now this now needs to be darker again. And this is often how it goes when you're painting. You you do one piece and you have to go back and revisit another. So it's a ongoing kind of uh, process of making adjustments throughout the painting. So I'm just going to place another wash over this just to make it a bit darker. And that helps quite a bit I think. And in places I'm just leaving patches of uh, light. Okay. But we're trying to give this scene a bit more impact than there is actually in the painting. Because in the painting, the actual photograph's a bit flat. Now there's a bit of shadow down this. There would be a bit of shadow down this side. So I'm just going down there to indicate some shadow. A bit darker, I think. It's looking for those little bits because they're so important when you uh, when you paint them. If you miss them, you're missing opportunities to add that interest to your painting. Now I've just realised there's a chimney on top and I missed that out. I'm going to leave it because it's too late to put it in. But uh, if you want to put your chimney in, you can. I'm sure somebody will tell me I've missed it. So, haha, I'll beat you to it. Right, so there we go. I'm not going to do an awful lot more to the barn. 
Okay, now we're going to have a look at these trees here. And we can lay some shadows in across there as well when we put the trees in. So for those, I'm basically going to use cobalt because I just want to use one blue. Well, I know we use cerulean in the sky, but I could be, be using others like ultramarine maybe for these. But I'm going to stick with cobalt blue because that's all you might have. And I just want to show it can be done. Light red. So it's cobalt blue, um, cadmium red and a touch of, I'll stay with lemon yellow, lemon yellow, to try and make a really dark bluey green. And that's kind of, now look at one side of the trees, they're kind of greener on one side than they are on the other, so I'm just going to start off. Look hard at what you're doing, because once you put these in, they're going to make quite a strong focal point in the painting. And I'm just sort of like sketching them in really. I'm not worrying too much about it. Oh, heavy breathing today, sorry. Um, again. I could use my Terry Harrison brush in a minute. That could be fun. So I'll get it on the ready. So basically, I'm, I suppose I'm trying to paint this painting with you, so you can have a go with with a limited amount of colours. I'm not really using the right brush here. I'm not getting the effect on the street that I want. But we'll try with the Terry Harrison brush. Yeah, see that's quite nice. That gives a nice broken effect around the around the tree. Let's add some just neat yellow to give some highlights there. That's better. And on there. And we'll go back to the blue, we'll get some darker blue. Basically, I think, because I'm doing this exercise, I tend to be, be painting a lot tighter than I would if I was painting for myself. And, you know, it's quite natural, I think, when you're doing something for other people. You don't necessarily paint as you would for yourself. You, you tighten up, because you're doing a demonstration, it's not as... You're not painting as fluidly. Okay, now we'll do this one. There's another one next to it. I, I tell you, I really recommend this brush. You don't want to overuse it because your paintings would look a bit too sort of textured. But for these trees, they're great. It's a really good brush. I, honestly, I, re I really recommend that you get one of these brushes. They're, they're, they're very good. I'm just going to put some darker in down that side. Right around there. And then I'm just going to... That's it. Just put those trees in very simply there. Okay. Now I'm going to paint the trunk at the bottom. And for that I'm just going to use a little bit of raw umber and cobalt blue. Again, we're, we're trying to stay to a pretty limited palette here. We're, we don't want to be introducing lots of different colours to it. And I think that cobalt blue and raw umber will work just fine. So we just put a little bit of, there we go, just a little bit of, uh, now these trees down, I'm not going to use a Terry Harrison brush for these trees, I'm going to use this brush. Um, but again, it's because it's in the distance, it's quite bluey, and there's not much colour in it. So I'm just going to simply just pop, pop it in, this tree, quite loosely. Just I'm trying to look, all I'm looking at, trying to try to get the, sh the shape something handy to what it is on there and that's fine and it's got a little trunk that sits at the bottom make sure you don't do the trunks too thick that's often another thing people tend to do I've done mine a little bit too thick really but hey um, there we go so we've got the trees in we've done the building We've got some more trees just down there, so we need to make that slightly more blue because they're further away. And it helps us give that sort of aerial perspective. If we warm them up too much, they would be conflicting and they would be, which wouldn't look right. So we're just indicating those back there. Nothing too much to worry about. 
And then on the horizon there, we've got another group of trees. Sorry, to Toby's barking again. I do apologise about that. But, well, I'll tell you what, I'll bring him in one day and you can say hi. Well, you can see who he is. <laughs> Can't really say hi. Um, okay, so now we're going to do the trees on the distance. And again, I've just mixed some cobalt blue, lemon yellow, and a touch of light red, uh, cadmium red to it. And I've got a nice cool blue colour. And I'm just going to put those in on the distance. And I really am getting some blue in that, and I quite like it. But on the top, where the light's hitting them, they're slightly more green. So you can make a shift to a more greener colour on the top. If you want to make it darker, a little bit more blue and a little bit of red will give you a nice sort of purpley, greeny, bluey colour. And that will work well for... So basically, just make sure you've got a good varied amount of colour in it. Don't paint it all one. You know, you can paint it all one, but it will just look boring. It can still look, you know, it still look like a good painting, but it just won't have the interest that varying your colours will give your painting. <clears throat> right, we'll just put a little bit of shadow in for these trees that we, we've uh, popped in there. And again, I'm using the same mixture, cobalt blue, lemon yellow, and a touch of red. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of shadow in just with the side of the brush just across there and so you know it's a, shadows are very powerful things in paintings they really really help to bring the painting alive and uh, like I say if we painted the if we painted the photograph just as it is it would be pretty boring you know it would be even if you painted it really really well very photographically it wouldn't have a lot of impact so what we're looking for something special in a painting, we're, that's what we can do. We, you know, we're designers and we can change things about a bit. Now I'm just going to go where the fence runs, I'll put the fence post in a minute. I'm just looking where the darks are on the picture and just indicating a few little darks. And as I go further away from me, obviously those little marks are going to get smaller. But in the foreground, there'll be more. But uh, now, OK, we look into the middle distance. I just want to get that sense of the hill curving over slightly, just just down through this passage here, because it just looks a little bit boring just on its own. So I'm just mixing up a very light wash of uh, cobalt blue, lemon yellow with a touch of red. And I'm just going to, I'm just looking at it, trying to get the feeling of the contours. Slightly too dark. So a little bit more lemon yellow just to get a little bit of interest in there doesn't matter if I go over the trees as long as they're dry make sure they're dry and uh, just trying to get a little bit just trying to describe some of the contours in the hills there. and we'll do the same up here at the top of the mountain there's a little tree up there I thought we could put in uh, very tiny you know it's not a and we could just sort of like block that in slightly just a brush mark something like that and there's another one just on the top there and then we can just take some uh, nice grey blue colour and we could just gently look at the picture there's a little bit of a recess there we could just add a little bit of detail kind of And in the background, there's a bluer hit. Let's put that one in. Just soften where that tree is slightly. And you can just get some fresh water on your brush. And those marks you make, just just soften them in parts. Because a good watercolour is made up from hard and soft edges. It's not all hard edges, and it's not all soft edges. It's a combination of the two. And a good painting will be made up of those things. So we're just after an impression of what we see. There's a few rocks up there, so I'm just going to hit in a couple of darks just to suggest the rocks. If you go down the route trying to paint everyone in, you're going to make life a nightmare for yourself. There we go. I've got to worry that I don't start over fiddling. So that's all I'm going to do for that, just to suggest those little bits of information. Okay, so let's move back down to 
the foliage in the foreground here. And again, I'm going back to keep it a simple palette. I'm going back to the, the lemon yellow and the um, cobalt blue. And I'm just going to just press it, pressing my brush down to create some shadows here on the foliage and some texture. Just looking at the picture and getting approximately looking where they are shadows. And sometimes you have to do more than what's in the picture to make it interesting. But it will just help bring that foreground, give some more interest in the foreground. I might just add a little bit of magenta to it to warm it up now as I'm coming closer. But you don't want to do too much. You know, the viewer makes a lot of the decisions for you. They tend to look at the scene and then um, build up a lot of the detail in their heads. Um, Take a little bit of raw sienna. We've got a flatter area of grass here. And it's just using the side of the brush, just to soften some of those edges, like I said earlier. So we've got hard and soft edges, don't have all hard edges. Soften some of the edges. And then down in this corner, what I always like to do in the corner of a painting probably shouldn't do it really because it kind of goes against the idea of taking your eye out of the painting but it seems to work it's just add a little bit more detail down here the dark or two and what we'll do in a minute is just add some really what I want to do is just I'm trying not to use too many colors I would actually if I was painting this obviously for myself I would introduce more colors but we want to. We, this is a beginner's watercolor, and we're trying to paint. Paint this. this we are painting this scene simply. A bit of dry brush. That's something we'll go into more. You'll see in later videos if you if you want to watch more eventually. Um, how we use dry brush. Now I'm going to just get a bit of magenta, a bit of cobalt blue, a bit of raw sienna to make a nice warm grey. I'm just going to, there's a couple of chips in the path there. I'm just going to put those in. Oh, I know I forgot to put in the posts. Using the same colour, I'm just going to indicate the, the posts. And as they go away from you, they're getting slightly closer together. Like that. So really, we, we obviously we've changed the painting around a little bit to add more light to it. Um, but that's fine. I might just put a little few little uh, pinky bits in there. So I think there would be some campion and fox gloves and stuff like that uh, on the right sort. So we'll just, just put a few little bits in, just to add a little bit of interest in places, so it's not too the same. I'm not trying to paint every little flower. I'm just hinting at it in places. You know, I just soften some of those edges, so not. Just soften it slightly. It just adds a little bit of interest. <coughs> a little bit of yellow. Just some bit of broken grass work. Yeah, we're worried we don't fiddle too much now because it's often what happens. And okay, so we finished the painting. Um, we used a relatively limited palette um, of colours. We managed to 
get some light in the painting because the, the photograph, my photograph is quite flat and hasn't got a lot of light. I've kept it quite simple with the washes. I haven't tried to do too much. Um, we did sort of have a go at doing some clouds and things like that, but simple. Keep it simple to start with. If you're not confident with the clouds, you know, have a go, obviously, but you know, don't don't beat, beat yourself up over it if it's not how you expect it to be. Um, and just have a go at doing the different effects, the trees. Um, I really can't, you know, that Terry Harrison brush. I'll, I'll find a link and I'll put it on my website to where you can buy those brushes. And uh, it's really really useful brush. Um, and have a go. And I, I really hope the video is some some use to you. Please um, post any questions you have, and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, have a go. And I look really really look forward to seeing uh, you know your results and what you produce. So uh, well, thanks for watching, and uh, I look forward to the next video. Bye for now.